Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Nicole Northgarden and in today's video I'm going to be showing you some thrift flips I created using these items mostly from the Goodwill outlet bins. If you like what you see in today's video I would love it if you'd hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you'll be notified every time I upload. Here we go! I found this piece at the Goodwill Outlet Bins, and if you're not familiar, at the bins you pay by the pound. It's pretty lightweight, so I probably paid about a dollar for it. I really like the painting on top. I don't love the colors though. The yellow with the burgundy doesn't really go with my house. So I'm going to be using the little metal pieces from these frames and doing a thrift flip on this piece. I will be using my chalk paint for a part of this, as well as some green acrylic paint, which is not shown here. When I first showed this piece in a thrift haul, someone suggested that I use it as a tea caddy, which I think is a fantastic idea. My husband and I drink a lot of tea from tea bags, and there's actually four different kinds that we drink all the time, and I have the tea bags kind of randomly placed in the area of our coffee and hot beverage bar. So to have them corralled in one place was a genius idea. Thank you to the person who suggested it. So the first thing I did was to pry off the wooden home letters with this little metal putty knife. I think this knife came in like a set of crafting knives, but if you didn't have this, a uh, putty knife from your garage would work as well. And then I used my little Black & Decker sander. You've seen me, if you've seen me do DIYs, you've seen me use this tool. I got mine as part of a three piece set. I think it came also with a drill driver and a flashlight and mine came from Ace Hardware. I think they sell similar sets on Amazon. So if I think of it, I'll try to link that or if you're really interested and I don't like it, you could always ask me. I, I can add it later if I don't remember <laughs> while editing this video. So I just wanted to make sure that I made the fronts of the drawers really smooth. I didn't want there to be any real evidence of the fact that something had been previously glued there. I wasn't really trying to get the color off as much as I was just trying to smooth out the texture from where I had taken the letters off. And once all of the drawer fronts were smoothed out, I just used a slightly dampened paper towel to wipe the sanding dust off. Okay, and then I gave the entire thing a coat of white chalk paint, except for the little design with the houses. I was trying to preserve that. I could have taped it off with painter's tape, but I couldn't find my painter's tape. So instead I just used this small brush to do the edging so that I wouldn't get white paint on the side with the design. And I was painting the whole thing in chalk paint with the knowledge that I was going to paint over this part of it with acrylic paint in a color. I wanted to add a color to the front. I tried blue and I really didn't, I was trying to pull a color from the houses and there is a blue house, really didn't like that. So I actually settled on this lovely green color which matches the trees. And then I also, what I'm showing you here is that I dry brushed white paint just to kind of tone down that yellow paint a little bit because again I really like the houses don't love the yellow but I didn't want to paint over them so here it is all painted up with the green paint I think initially I had painted the drawers blue did not like those at all so you can kind of see where I roughed it up the um, roughed up parts show the blue through which I think is kind of neat once I had figured out all of the paint woes, because <laughs> I changed it, I think twice, until I got this color. Um, once I got through all of that, I wanted to add these little metal brackets to the front, and those can hold labels to tell me which tea bags are in which drawer. So that was my motivation for putting these on the front. Plus, they're just a really cute farmhouse accent. Now the wood for the drawers is very soft and the screws are very tiny. So I didn't need to drill pilot holes. I really just 
lined up all the brackets where I wanted them. I marked the holes on the brackets with that pen that you see there. I used the tip of the pen to kind of push into the wood, which sort of functioned as a little pilot hole. And then I just used my screwdriver to screw the screws in. And the screws did have a little bit of a pointy end on them, so that made it all easier. Obviously, if these were bigger screws, you would want to drill pilot holes, but that was not necessary in this case. And here it is, all finished. Now, I will tell you, I did not record this part, but I did take it outside and give it a coat of Rust-Oleum Matte Acrylic Clear Coat. So it's a spray paint, works great, but you have to use it outdoors or in a well-ventilated area. And once it was dry, I just took this little index card and cut some labels so that I could use them to label the tea drawers. And then I wrote up my labels and got all my little tea bags put into the proper drawers. I use Zen, which is a green tea with mint, and also lemon ginger is another one. Peppermint I drink all the time, and then I have a decaf green. So those are the teas that we drink all the time. My hubby always drinks Zen, that's his favorite. I am more of an herbal, I love the peppermint tea. And sometimes if I want the green tea, I'll just throw a little decaf tea bag in there. And lemon ginger is just kind of always good. It's a good standby. And I was quite excited about how perfectly these tea bags fit into these drawers. It's like this thing was made to hold tea bags. Again, such a great idea. And here it is all stocked up with my teas and I have it here on my counter. Now we don't have a lot of counter space in our home. So I know this stuff might not seem ideal to some of you, but it is great for us because this is legitimately where we make all of our hot beverages. So this worked out perfectly. I love this project. This next project is also a thrift flip using something I found at the bins. It's this Bon Appetit sign. I'm sure this graced the wall of someone's kitchen for a long time. But what I liked about it was the edge, the detail on the frame I thought was really great and flipped upside down, I thought it would make a really nice tray. So the first step was to get the staples out. I don't even know why those staples were there. They didn't seem to be serving any purpose. So I just used my pliers and pulled them out. Now they did leave little holes, which you could definitely fill with like putty, but I wasn't too worried about it because I wanted it to have like a rustic kind of look to it. So I did not fill the holes. I just painted. And then I took my white chalk paint and gave it several coats of chalk paint. I think it was probably two solid coats and then a third with just touching up any dark places. So it was hard to get the dark to not show through the white. <laughs> I did add this in. I got this idea from Ginger Chick Rehab. I found this Lazy Susan at the bins as well, and it makes it so much easier to paint things. So if you come across one of these and you're a crafter, pick it up because it makes painting so much better. My plan was to add wooden beads as feet to my tray. And I got these wooden beads at a craft store. I think I got them for $1.79. I think I even show you in a minute here. It's not a full container, but it's a lot of beads, which was really nice. There's the price. Anyway, I intentionally did not paint the bottom of the tray because I wanted to glue my feet on first and then I was gonna paint the whole thing. However, here's where I made an error. So the Bon Appetit is actually almost like a paper sticker. And so when I glued the feet to it, it actually kind of peeled off. And so I wound up, I don't even know if I showed this, I wound up having to peel off the sticker and then glue the feet on and then paint it. So you won't see that here, but if you were ever to decide to try to use one of these signs as a tray and you needed to glue to the bottom of it, take that sticker off first so that what you're gluing really adheres. 
to like the actual, you know, MDF or whatever the bottom of the tray is made out of. I painted the bottom and the feet and then I took my little sander and I distressed the piece and it was easy to distress this piece because of the dark layer underneath. And here's what it looked like all distressed. So I really liked how that turned out. And then I took my white wax and I just brushed a coat of white wax onto the piece and then kind of wiped it off. And I did this because I didn't want it to be so blazing white. You know, I wanted to give it a little bit of distress, but I didn't want to use the antique wax because that would like really brown it up and I didn't want to do that. And then I sealed it up with the Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Coat outside. I recently found these pieces of hardware at the Goodwill Outlet Bins as well that was in, I think, the same haul. And I was not ready to commit these to this tray forever. So I used hot glue to attach them to my tray. Now, they stayed on just fine. I would not lift the tray with these. If I wanted them to really be on there good, I would have used E6000, but I really just wasn't sure that I wanted them to be on this tray forever. <laughs> I wanted to be able to take them off just in case I want to use them on a furniture project at some point in the future. And here it is all finished. I'll show it to you how I have it temporarily styled, but I'm probably going to be using this in my fall decor and I have not put my fall decor out yet. I haven't even gotten my fall decor out yet. So this will probably be styled differently for fall. And that's all that I have for you today. I hope you've enjoyed these thrift flip DIYs. I'll be starting with my fall crafting in the next two weeks. And until then, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.